that you think to yourself, that you think to yourself, I'm ready to hire this person. And we gathered all this data and I visited countless uh, compliance facilities. I spoke with lab managers everywhere and we gathered all of this data to think or to make this program of, of the sciences, of chemistry. And the role that chemistry played and the instruments, it was such a natural fit. I was walking into these labs and they would tell me about this instrument and I would tell them more about the instrument, you know, and it was just, they couldn't believe how much we knew about what they were doing and, and vice versa. So it just felt like a real organic fit between uh, the cannabis testing and the chemistry department. And a lot of what I saw were already teaching, right? So a lot of what they do, we we teach our students already. And so then it became the, let's make this a this program a certificate, right? Let, let's have students, you know, have this career that they love chemistry, they love the sciences, uh, but maybe they don't want to get into healthcare because majority of our of our students are uh, health science, pre-health science, right? So they're pre-med, pre-dent, pre-PA, pre-farm. Uh, but then we have those group of students that really just like the science. They like the chemistry, but they don't necessarily want to get into healthcare. And this is a great field. And you'll see it in my slides uh, for a student to get started in uh, just with the, the courses and the plan of work that we have in their certificate program. Um, so with that, I'm going to share my screen. And then we'll get started. So I, my, my, my talk is a little bit twofold. Um, I want to introduce everybody to the chemistry department at Wayne State because anybody who would be earning the certificate would be part of our chemistry department. And there's a lot of aspects of that that I think people don't know or it it, it would be good for, for people to see. Okay, so can everybody see the presentation? Sharing. Okay, good. Perfect. All right. All right. So let's get started into a look of our facilities that we have. I actually made my background, the atrium of the chemistry building. Uh, for anybody on here that's not familiar with it, this is kind of like not the heart of the chemistry building, but it kind of is for us teaching faculty because this is where all the students gather. Uh, but I'll talk more about that. So these next few slides will just offer a glimpse into what the chemistry program has, its resources for any of the students enrolled. So this is our chemistry building. It's the A. Paul Scott Chemistry Building and Lecture Hall. This is the actual building here with the lecture hall kind of in the front of the facade. These are the research labs, and I will talk more about those when I talk about the certificate because students who uh, who are enrolled in the certificate will be working in these labs as part of the certificate program. Uh, this is just a really pretty picture of the building that's outside. And then this is the atrium of the chemistry building. So this is where our students come for all the resources. So this is where they'll come for the tutoring, the help, all the teaching faculty offices are here, and then the lecture hall is also in that space. So I'm not going to, so this is a video, the chemistry department. I wasn't going to play it, but I don't even think that's an option right now, but it just shows, um, oh, there we go. So it just shows the uh, walking in, the, the atmosphere of the chemistry building, which I think is important uh, for students to see. I'm going to turn the volume down because I can just narrate it while I'm talking. Um, but this is that atrium that I spoke of where students hang out. This is the teaching faculty's offices um, where we're available you know, for all the students. This is our peer mentoring where we have undergraduates come and help students who are enrolled in our classes. Uh, all of this takes place in the atrium. And then these are our graduate spaces for graduates and undergrads who are in research labs um, for them to join do, you know, do work together, collaborate, uh, collaborative spaces. This is our Luminant Instrument Center, which I'm going to touch on in a, in a couple slides. But again, this is for students who perform research in the lab. 
they will be able to utilize this space. So here in this next slide, this is the Lumigen Instrument Center. So cannabis students will be in, in this space and this will be part of your research. These instruments are upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Our Lumigen Instrument Center that we house in chemistry is a huge asset to our department because of the instrumentation we have. I mean, we have the major car companies coming and testing samples in our department because of how well run and because of the instruments that we have here. Uh, if you're in the chemistry courses and you're just in the in the teaching labs, you don't get to get exposure to these kind of instruments. However, in our certificate programs or in our majors, you will. And and this is this is really a big thing to put on any application. You know that you are able to run these instruments, that you know the protocols behind these. And if you get so far as to troubleshoot these instruments, again, that's a huge plus uh, to put on. So we really wanted to make sure this was part of our certificate program because anybody that wants to pursue a career in cannabis testing, there's so many instruments that that you're going to be using specifically separation techniques that we really wanted to allow students a chance to work on these instruments and get a lot of experience on them. Okay, so this is a new building at, at Wayne State that we're pretty proud of because um, we were actually part of the planning of it, which was really nice because if our labs were going to be in here, they really wanted our input, which like I said, it, it was invaluable for us to be able to walk through it and, and give our input on how we wanted the, the setup. So this is the lab for one of the first courses for the cannabis certificate. This is the analytical chemistry lab um, that I think some of you are familiar with, or I saw some of you in there today <laughs> doing your doing your work. Um, so this is where the certificate starts. And I have a plan of courses for the certificate that we'll look at later on in the slides. Uh, but this is one of the labs uh, that you will be starting in. And this is where there is that, that instrumentation. The instrumentation in this lab, you will you know, get introduced to it. It's not gonna be like the Lumigen Instrument Center, uh, but there's like a, like a light introduction to the instrumentation. And then as you go on into the certificate, and you start doing the undergraduate research, that's when you start building more and more of, of that. And then these are just more study spaces and it's just really a beautiful building to, to learn and study in. So we always like to include it and advertise it, right? So there's also a lot of student support that we offer to our students. And this is for all of the students who are taking chemistry courses. So anybody who starts the certificate and starts maybe the prerequisites for it, which I'll talk about, or they'll start in analytical chemistry or Chem 3120, uh, there's still a lot of student support. So we have learning communities that we run. We'll talk about those. Uh, the Chemistry Learning Center is kind of like a tutoring space, but they're graduate students, so they're working on their PhD. And then we have that Academic Success Center, which is run uh, by the university. So it's not specific to chemistry, but it's still a great resource. Uh, for students to have, and they offer tutoring and supplemental instruction uh, for a lot of our courses. So the learning community is pretty near and dear to my heart because I run the general chemistry. I'm co-director of the general chemistry learning community, which the prerequisites for our certificate will come from. And it's basically students who have mastered a course, who have done really well in it, uh, come back and they help other students. And it's, it's, it works really well because these students have either taken the instructor teaching the course or have gone many chemistries past this and, and they know how to teach the material. Um, they know kind of like how the exams are asked or they've just experienced it, right? And so it's a lot easier for them to come back. And a lot of times our peer mentors, it's a very diverse background. They bring more advice than just chemistry. You know, they're applying to the to the med schools, the pharmacy schools, or they're looking at cannabis certificates, and they're able to share that that advice with students. So it's they're mentors. We call them peer mentors because they really are. They don't just tutor chemistry. You know, they always end up helping our students along the way, and we we really love our our learning communities that we have um, in chemistry. There's also a lot of student services that our students can fill up uh, for their applications. 
There's uh, our ACS student affiliates. So that's kind of like our chemistry club where they do a lot of outreach. You can see students making unicorn slime. We set the record for the world's largest periodic table. And um, in the left-hand corner, that's our Nobuche. So that's our graduate uh, club or organization. And they do a lot of outreach too. So for students who want to get involved in the Detroit area with outreach, we have a lot of opportunities for that as well. Okay, so now let's get into cannabis chemistry. So I give a background on how it, it got started and, and why, you know, it's at Wayne State now. Uh, but I really want to dive into, you know, why would students want to do cannabis chemistry? What is cannabis chemistry here to stay, right? Is cannabis in Michigan here to stay? I would never want to start a certificate program that I felt like it was going to be a fad, right? I never would put a year's worth of work into something that, would not stay. So when I was doing my research, that was even something a faculty member said, you know, are we sure cannabis in Michigan is here to stay? You'll see based on these numbers, it's not going anywhere, right? So cannabis is only going to grow in Michigan and more states. I think Ohio just got approved. More states are going to, uh, to approve cannabis legally statewide. And so that's what I kind of want to jump into in these slides, uh, a background on cannabis you know, what they do, what, what kind of job would this be? Is there room for growth, right? What does the pay look like? These are all things, these are all valid questions. Uh, a lot of students prefer quality of life. You know, what are my hours going to be? I, you know, they'd rather, they'd rather have time outside of work, which is, is important. And so, you know, does cannabis offer me that? And then we'll get into the the basics like what are the gen the requirements you'll need and then the plan of courses and then i can um answer questions after that okay so why a career in cannabis well you can see here michigan marijuana sales passed three billion in 2023 so that's a huge number i think we are third in the nation for cannabis sales um just in an interview and uh we were chatting about that. And when you're competing with states like California and Colorado, where cannabis has been around for much longer and we're third, that's huge. Uh, that, that's huge. I mean, the, the, the rate and the growth, it's outstanding for what it's doing in Michigan. So retailers increased by 120, leading to now 750 marijuana stores in Michigan. Now, when I say 750 marijuana stores in Michigan, I know some people will think, well, I'm not getting into the sales, right? What do the stores have to do with the chemistry? All of these products that are on the shelves have to be regulated, right? So all of the products that are on these 700, on the shelves of these 750 stores have to go through a compliance facility. They have to be checked. There has to be checked for metal exposure. There has to be checked for the THC levels, right? There has to be there has to be a check for uh, mold, aspergillus. This is a plant, right? So it's very easy uh, for them to grow mold. And and besides the fact of recreational marijuana, there's a lot of purpose of marijuana for medicinal reasons, right? And so if you're immunosuppressed and you're using marijuana to treat any kind of any disease state, and you're already immunosuppressed, think about the scientists who have to, uh, you know, perform an aspergillus test. You know, if you want to put a product out there, but you're giving it to, to patients who already have a suppressed immune system, that's a big responsibility, right? That's a big responsibility for a scientist. And they really have to make sure that what they're putting out there is sound science, because you can never give something like that to a patient to help treat them, but there's mold counts in there, right? And so all of these products have to be tested. And so that's a huge business of, of just the testing alone. And currently there's over 35,000 employees that work for Michigan Cannabis Licensees. And this is a 23% increase from a year ago. So this article came out in January. So that was right at a year, you know, December 23. So that's a 23% increase which means that these jobs are just going to keep uh, increasing. Okay, so what does it look like to have a job in cannabis? Well, the first thing is there's so many different careers in cannabis. And I learned that 
along the way. I didn't realize how far the cannabis arm extended into other fields. Even most recently, I was talking to uh, somebody from Wayne and, and they had a friend who works in banking for cannabis. I didn't even realize that there was special positions to deal with people in the cannabis industry and their banking, right? And in, in the credit unions. I've been a floored, honestly, every time I've talked to somebody about the cannabis and the people who've reached out to me, it's been cannabis sales or they, they're, um, it, it's a hiring firm for cannabis jobs. They've reached out to me, you know, the conferences that I've been invited to, to speak, uh, for, for cannabis and getting the word out there. I just didn't realize how many positions there are. And so it really extends from marijuana law to supply chain, the finance and banking to the education, right? There's uh, other universities in Michigan that are offering cannabis and not just the testing, the growth, the production and all, everything um, all the way down to agriculture and testing. So I wanna, um, I know we had some people join. I really wanna focus on the idea that what we offer is a testing certificate. So when students enroll in the certificate program, it's not the growth, it's not the production, it is the testing of cannabis. So the idea is for our students to get a position in a compliance facility, right? So they'll use the techniques and, and the knowledge that they've learned to get a position in, in a lab, right? Testing the cannabis and everything that from when you walk into the lab, uh, even the stuff that you won't realize you're thinking of, the the ethics, the safety, uh, everything will be taught in our courses. And I'll touch on that when I show the the plan of work for the course. Okay, so cannabis testing um, with all those increases that I showed you guys in the num, you know, with the in the numbers, the need for the regulations have increased because every product must go through a safety compliance facility uh, that ensures the active levels, the safety of the products. They will use nothing but chemistry, right? From the moment they get the sample to prepping it, even to destroying the sample. So that's another thing. When I went to these compliance facilities and they showed me uh, how they dispose of the samples. You know, you can't just throw it away, right? This is, they have people who will actually, you know, try to find their old samples for, for personal use, right? You'll have people, um, you know, that will go through uh, the, the garbage and the dumpsters to, to, to try to get the cannabis out of there. So they, they actually have to destroy it. So they'll mix it with coffee grounds or they'll mix it with, with the dirt, um, the techniques that they use, it just the science, you just don't think of these things when, when, you know, you're, you're looking at this lab, but I really couldn't believe, um, every, all the techniques that they use, how, how closely related it is to what we do. And then most excitingly is that governor Whitmer actually included a $4.4 .4 million budget in this 2024. So they can open a state run, a marijuana testing lab because, uh, there's no standards right now. This is such a new field. And that's what I've heard from a lot of people. Everything is new. You know, they're, they're coming out with new protocols, new SOPs all the time. And there's nothing really to compare it to. And so that's why they're starting the state run marijuana testing lab. So there can be um, standards, right, to, to compare everything to. And that's also something that's so great about this field is that you know, you can pioneer something, right? This is something that's new for everybody. And so there's discoveries to be made in every corner in this field. And that's something that um, I think is interesting to a lot of people, you know, when they, when they get a certificate or they get a degree, that's something that really makes them feel like, you know, their, their work is, is, is doing something is when, you know, it's new and it's exciting and, and you can constantly contribute to this field. Okay, so the requirements for the cannabis chemistry is to have general chemistry one and two. At Wayne State, that would be Chem 1100 and the lab, which is 1130, and then uh, chemistry Chem 1140, which is general chemistry two, and the lab, which is 1150. A minimum of 2.5 GPA, and you may have a bachelor's from Wayne State or another institution. The certificate includes um, the Gen Chem one and two, the 2.5 GPA, and then the 
bachelor's um, from Wayne State or another institution, meaning um, the, the prereqs basically for it. So here's a schedule of classes for the cannabis. There's two semesters, so it's a full academic year, the fall and the winter. These are the credit hours. So it would start with analytical chemistry, which is your Chem 3120, and then the lab um, with one credit, that's the Chem 3130. Then you would jump into Chem 6160, that's a separation science. So separation is one of the main techniques that you'll utilize in cannabis chemistry. What's really important and what we heard from a lot of faculty when we were getting approval from Wayne State is to have a safety and RCR course. So that's responsible conduct of research. That's what RCR stands for. Uh, when I was meeting uh, with lab managers and people in this field, they couldn't stress how important ethics is in this field, in, in cannabis. And they gave me a great example, which I'll share with you guys because it really, it hit home with me. You know, uh, we were talking to a lab manager and he said, when I come back and I tell my clients who have paid me for these, for this test, your millions of dollars of product are no good. He's like, and I have to come there and tell them that, that you can't sell this, right? You've been growing this product. You have millions of dollars into this and you cannot sell it. He goes, you have to stand by your data. You have to stand by as a scientist, right? There's, there's a certain level of ethics that you have to have in, in, in running and working for one of these labs. And you have to know your data. If you're trying to tell somebody that they're going to lose that much money, your data, your data and your science needs to be very sound and you need to be very ethical in how you acquire this data. If you search for news articles on labs that are being sued or for, for unethical handling, it, you would get a plethora of articles. And these are these are major labs, right, uh, that have this. And that's not something we want from Wayne State. So we, we want to make sure that our students understand, A, the safety of a lab, right, and the responsible conduct of research, uh, especially in, in the fields of cannabis. And then there's a credit of the undergraduate research. So that's our 5999. That's our research credit. And then in the winter, another lab will start. It's our instrumental lab. So that's, again, hands-on instrumental for the course. There is a seminar course where students will learn about research that goes on, um, you know, around the world, research. So they'll just, they'll, they'll hear seminars and, and presenters talk about the kind of research that they do. And then again, they'll, they'll have one full year of undergraduate research. So we'll place them into an analytical chemistry lab where they will learn uh, how to have a project of their own, right? And so from that, they'll learn uh, dilution, sample prep, data analysis, all of these things. Um, so I just wanted to give an insight into a laboratory course. This is one of the labs that I'm teaching right now, which is the analytical lab, um, which I teach a lot. So I, I know this, this uh, course really well. And this would just be uh, a semester worth of experiments uh, that you would be doing. So it just gives a good idea of what would our, our laboratory course look like, right? And so about halfway through the semester is where the instrumentation will start. And until then, it's a lot of sample prep. It's a lot of, <laughs> I know one of my students is shaking. <laughs> yes, it's a lot of sample prep and dilutions. Uh, it's it's good preparation, right? It's, it's, and the, it's graded on accuracy too. So you really have to, you know, make sure what you're doing, but it's good practice, especially for working in a research lab, you know, where, where it's gonna count. Okay, so this is one of the lab spaces that our undergraduate students uh, we'll work into. So we have great lab spaces uh, for students and this will this will be your home day in and day out, right? So you'll have a project that you'll work on under a graduate student and it'll be a problem that you solve. And there's no better preparation for working in a lab than you solving your, a problem, right? And you coming up with, okay, how, let me design an experiment. And then you'll talk to your advisor and they'll give you input and then you, you know, you go and you do it and you do the science and it's really exciting. And then a lot of our undergraduate research present their, their research nationwide at conferences. And so that's another opportunity uh, for our students. Okay, so uh, getting into now, if you, you know, work in the field of cannabis, 
what kind of salary and work-life balance can you expect? So the hours for the labs are mostly open nine to five. I know there's some times where I've heard from, you know, some of my friends in the business where they had a big sample come in and, you know, the supplier says, I really need these samples tested soon. And of course, those are charged for that, but they're, they may ask you to stay on it and help them. But otherwise, they're mostly nine to five hours. The pay starts from 50 to 55,000 and can go upwards of, you know, making over 100,000 if you for becoming a land manager at one of these compliance facilities, which means that there's a lot of room for growth, right? So if you're coming in and you're starting, um, I also know people who have started their own labs, you know, they worked in the business so long that they know it inside and out and they um, will start their own compliance facility, which is exciting. And again, uh, echoing what I said in the beginning, this is a science field that's not related to healthcare. So if you like chemistry and the science and the instrumentation, but you don't want to, you know, apply it to medicine, this is a totally different field where, where you can use that, where you can use your knowledge. Okay. So to conclude, you know, the field in cannabis is a great alternative for students interested in science, but maybe not healthcare. It's an emerging field. There's room for growth. It's lucrative. Um, some other stories that I've heard from people that I've been talking to is one, you can be yourself. So this is a field where people feel at home to be themselves, right? And it really is a tight knit family of, of people in cannabis. You know, I'll meet with somebody and they'll ask, you know, who else did you meet with? And I'll say their names. They're like, oh, I know them. You know, everybody knew each other, right? And everybody was so friendly and, and helping and I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me to help Wayne State with the certificate. And it's it's been email after email of what can we do to help? We're so excited about their certificate. Where where do we fit into this? I, I it's the it's been amazing, you know, the the support. It's it's really been great. So it's it's good for anybody who who feels like, you know, they can be themselves in this field or want to be themselves. And it's also great for having that idea of pioneering, right? From what I said before that this is something that everything's new. So this is where you can really, um, you know, make new findings every day. Okay, and that's it. So I will stop there and I'm happy to take any questions. Dr. Maddie, I had a quick question for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if you're like in the middle of taking one of the prereq classes, can yeah. I that towards the certificate or do I have to follow your time? No, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll count. Hey, can I ask a question? Sure. Hey, I was just curious if there was um like any financial support that was available for people who are trying to enter this program any um, scholarships that are specific to the program or is it just general, like, you know, get whatever funds you can and you're kind of on your own for it? That's a good question. Erica, do you know if there's, I know there's not something specific for cannabis, but is there something from the college? Yeah, this is a really good question. So I have mm -hmm. asked this question from my understanding with financial aid, if there, if you were eligible for financial aid and you haven't exhausted it with your former, like let's say you earned a bachelor's degree, there would be a way to apply it towards this. For, but there are also, if you're a current student and you're already taking some of these courses. So for example, Andrea, you had a student just a second ago who asked if they're already in a course, mm -hmm. can it count mm -hmm. towards the program? If you're already kind of getting financial aid and you're able to incorporate those courses into your plan of work for your bachelor's, you would also still be able to count it towards the certificate. Am I correct? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so in that sense, uh, is it Khaled, Khalid? I, I already yes. asked. This. Thank Have you. We actually, um, yes, we well, met, we did. And I asked you the same question. So thank you again for the <laughs> reminder. So yeah. Um, in that sense, you could use financial aid if you're already on your way to earning a bachelor's. Now it gets a little bit trickier if you've already earned a bachelor's, that's gonna be kind of person by person in terms of what potential access to fa financial aid from FAFSA you may still have left or uh, unused. So that's a great question to kind of ask once you've entered into the program, get a sense from the financial aid department if there is any aid that you can use if you've already earned your bachelor's. Okay, thank you.
Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Um, in terms of, I know you said Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2 are required. Um, yeah. I took Gen Chem 1 a few years ago and I took Gen Chem 2 um, last year. I'm currently in Orgo 1 right now. Does um does yeah. one rep does one chemistry course replace the other or like is there a statute of limitation on how long ago you took um a certain class as long as you passed or met the like you said the GPA requirement or I know certain programs it doesn't matter if you passed or not it's just um has to be taken by a certain time frame yeah so it's a uh, 70 percent or higher in order for you to move on to the next chemistry but if you're in orgo one then you've already earned that because you're already following the sequence and Correct. yeah, yeah. So you're good. And then if it was just come on a few years ago, that's okay too. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, can I ask a question too? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what about doctoral students? I'm a PhD candidate uh, at Applebaum. Did, okay. Did this fit into my, pro into my program or... Because I don't necessarily have, I didn't do my undergrad at Wayne State, but I did my master's at Wayne State, and now I'm doing my, um, yeah, PhD at Wayne State. Okay. Okay, that's a good question, because it's an undergraduate certificate, and that's how we had to code it as an undergraduate certificate. So I'm not sure, Erica, would it, if they're already a doctoral student, can they earn an undergraduate certificate, or does it have to be a graduate? So any student that's earned a bachelor's, regardless of what level of education you're in now, can apply for this undergraduate certificate program. In terms of how and if it could fit into your doctoral coursework, that I'm a little bit unclear on. I would think there would not be a ton of overlap, if any. So this is a really good question, I would say, to ask if you have an advisor that you kind of regularly meet or seek out for your PhD program, this is a really good question for them. But in terms of your eligibility, could you apply and enter into this program? 100%, since you have already earned a bachelor's from an accredited university. And then my stipend can pay for the program? So That's, I receive a a stipend. That's a good question. That you would have to clarify with financial aid as well, because you're already in a doctoral program. I'm not sure if your uh, aid that you're receiving currently could be counted toward an undergraduate program as well. That's a question for financial aid. That's a very good question. Thank you. Thank what, you so much. What's the what's the doctorate program? What, uh, the actual program at, at Applebaum. Pharmacology and toxicology. I work okay. in Dr. Pitts's lab. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. Oh, I did my um postdoc in pharmaceutical sciences. That's why I was wondering. And I know some of the programs there. So I was just uh, thinking how, how they fit in because we do have some uh, pharmacy classes uh, worked into our electives. I just wanted to ask um, a clarifying question. So mm -hmm. you have to have a bachelor's degree or can you be in the middle of earning one for this? Yeah, you, you don't have to have, you you could have earned it and come back, but you don't have to. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Maddie. Hi. Hi, my name's Scott Brown. I'm actually a faculty over at with Mort Sai, and I was yeah. watching your program over here, and uh, very interesting. Um, I just wanted to uh, take a minute and see if I have your correct email address. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'd like to send you, just uh, talk to you on a couple points there and possibly some uh, uh, interesting information. So uh, I have you as maddie at chem.wayne.edu. Yes. Yep. Okay. I mean, Okay, I'd like to like to talk to you. We we do a little program over there, but I'll give you more of the information later, and uh, if we get a chance to discuss, I think very interesting. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? Um, last yeah. one, would there be any opportunity for us to um, kind of hear from the experiences of people who are working in that field already? Yes, yes. We had a seminar last semester uh, from a lab manager, but also I'm happy to get in touch uh, with any students and put them in touch with, you know, my resources in the industry and let them talk to them ab about that. So I will put my email in the chat and 
feel free to email me anytime and I will make sure that I make it happen. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Erica. Is there any um guarantee or does Wayne State work with any um like facilities to ensure that the students graduating from this program would um have a job after this, possibly? Yes. So uh we can't guarantee, uh, but there are we have so many relationships with testing facilities. And I honestly, there's so many people waiting for our graduates. Uh, just from people that I've talked to, they there's so many directions I could point the students in of labs to get started. Um, just from the relationships that that we've grown, so I don't I don't see that being a problem. But um, once students get into their certificate certificate program, that's something that you know we meet with them and, and talk to them about. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so if there's no more questions, we have some prize pack winners uh, for me to announce. Um, excited uh, for Michelle Mallow, you got a prize pack, and uh, Matthew Wilson and Nicole Smiley. So they will follow up uh, via email to confirm your shirt size and your mailing address so you guys can get the prize packs. So that's exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been great chatting with everybody. Uh, my email is in the chat. If you have any more questions that you haven't thought of or anything else you, you want to comment on, anything that you like or, or don't like about the program, anything, I'm open to, to chat with everybody about anything. So uh, please feel free to email me, even if you're just like, I want to hear more, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to meet and chat with anyone. So please feel free to, to use that email address. Um, if you have any more questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you, Dr. Maddie. Yeah, thanks, Michelle.